Bienvenue à cette première conférence de presse. Welcome to this first press conference of the plenary of the uh, Canadian Conference of Catholic Bishops. Je me présente, mon nom est Paul-André Durocher, archevêque de Gatineau et vice-président de la conférence. As you can already tell, this will be a bilingual a conference, uh, press conference, as we are a bilingual conference. I'd like to welcome uh, those who are joining us on the web, live, and uh, welcome all of you who are here uh, for this uh, short conference. I will make a 10-minute presentation of different events that have happened today, and then we'll open it up for questions. Alors, je vais présenter uh, une dizaine de minutes, uh, un survol de ce que nous avons fait aujourd'hui, ici à la, à la conférence, et uh, ensuite uh, un temps d'échange. Uh, Peut-être la première chose uh, que j'aimerais partager avec vous, ce sont les, les points saillants du rapport de notre président, Monseigneur Richard Smith. Bishop Smith, uh, Bishop Smith, our president, presented his annual report in which he outlined some of the major uh, events that marked the life of the conference this year. Just to note a few of them, first of all was the annual visit of the presidency to Rome last November. The president, the vice president, and the secretary general, uh, we spent uh, two weeks in Rome. We had about 35 meetings with different agencies in Rome, the various departments of the Roman Curia, to discuss issues of common interest between the church in Canada and the Universal Church, uh, which was a very good, frank, open, warm discussions. It was uh, a wonderful time of uh, mutual sharing and of clarification of issues. Uh, donc le rapport a commencé par noter, du président a commencé par noter cette visite de la présidence au Vatican. Le deuxième item, euh, c'est notre plan pastoral pour la vie et la famille. C'est un plan pastoral que nous avons euh, commencé euh, à lancer l'an dernier. Les évêques veulent prendre un leadership euh, sûr dans ce domaine-là. Alors, nous avons commencé à élaborer des outils et des éléments pour ce plan national pastoral. So, the national pastoral plan for life and the family has been moving forward. I'll say a few more words about it uh, when I speak about our exchanges today. A third item, uh, the bishop reminded um, our conference of our visit to Haiti, the visit of the president and the vice president and one of our assistant secretary generals uh, to witness uh, firsthand the work that Development and Peace is doing in the reconstruction and the renewal of Haiti. Alors, la visite, nous avons parlé de cette visite en Haïti en décembre dernier, où nous avons pu voir uh, uh, de, de visu le travail extraordinaire que fait Développement et Paix dans le milieu haïtien, par, surtout avec les partenaires à part au prince et dans les régions. Uh, ça a été pour nous vraiment une, euh, une découverte, euh, on pourrait dire, nous savions théoriquement ce que fait Développement épais de le voir nous-mêmes a été euh, très impressionnant. Ensuite, euh, notre président nous a rappelé la publication d'un guide d'éthique de la santé par l'Alliance catholique canadienne de la santé. Euh, euh, L'Alliance canadienne publie ce guide, mais ce sont les évêques qui donnent le Niki Lobstadt. So the Canadian Catholic Health Alliance published a, a guide, uh, an ethical guide for healthcare. Uh, the Nikhil Obstat was given by the CCCB. It was a work that involved a lot of collaboration between the CCCB and the Alliance because this guide really presents uh, fundamental ethical and moral issues uh, and to help Catholic institutions and Catholic doctors and medical workers to, uh, to be clear on their own understanding and their own practices uh, within life issues. Um, nous avons aussi fait référence à la lettre sur la liberté uh, de conscience, la liberté de religion, qui a été publiée il y a quelques mois. We published a letter on the freedom of conscience and of religion a few months ago, and the president referred to the ongoing actuality of that letter and its importance within the Canadian context. Enfin, le président a rappelé le congrès eucharistique international qui a eu lieu à Dublin euh, au mois de juin dernier. Le contingent canadien était le plus grand contingent international euh, qui s'est présenté à cet événement. 
qui a vraiment touché beaucoup de gens. Le président lui-même y était avec sa délégation de, de près de 1500 euh, Canadiens et Canadiennes présents à, à Dublin. So the International Eucharistic Conference, we have two national delegates uh, who are uh, named and sponsored by the CCCB who help coordinate uh, work around the International Eucharistic Congresses and their presence uh, this year uh, was remarkable in Dublin. So that was uh, the report of the uh, president. I would like to move on just to uh, name some of the major uh, issues we will be dealing with during the next four days. Uh, the president also outlined those. De quoi allons-nous parler dans les quatre prochaines journées ici à la conférence? Un des thèmes importants, ça va être le thème de l'immigration. Euh, C'est une question qui nous préoccupe comme évêque euh, depuis un bon bout de temps les politiques du gouvernement autour de l'immigration. Et euh, ce qui fait que nous avons une commission de justice et de paix qui a souvent écrit au gouvernement dans le cadre de notre comité de relations intergouvernementales où nous essayons d'établir quelques relations avec le gouvernement pour leur apporter nos préoccupations. Il y a eu une rencontre avec le ministre Kelly où, où nous lui avons partagé Euh, quelques questions, et il s'est dit ouvert à venir en jaser avec les évêques. So, uh, really, Mr. Ke Minister Kennedy, uh, sorry, Minister Kennedy's presence uh, this weekend is, um, this week is the fruit of uh, discussions. We've been carrying some of our worries, uh, some of our questions around immigration refugee issues, and so uh, our president was able to meet with Mr. Ke Minister Kenny, Kenny at one point, and he offered to come and listen to the bishops. So this week we will have a chance to have a free-flowing discussion with him about some of these vital issues for Canadian society. We're also going to uh, look again at the issue of the fallout of um, the clergy sexual abuse scandals in Canada, particularly right now, we're looking at broader issues. I think we feel in Canada now the, the question of the handling of such allegations, uh, particularly following the publication of From Pain to Hope about 20 years ago, and uh, the establishment of diocesan protocols really has brought a lot of um, transparency and a lot of uh, clarity to th the process of dealing with allegations. Also, many, many dioceses have uh, set into place um, screening policies to uh, make sure that um, these tragedies uh, no longer happen. But the question now is the question of healing and the question of, of accompaniment of uh, priests in terms of uh, what is it in their lives that might contribute to situations where they um, fall into this horrible uh, situation. And so this week we're going to be looking at the life of priests in a very special way and we have some people who will be coming to work with us to reflect on this, the care of priests and also the care of victims. So um, uh, this will be an issue that we will continue to work on. Obviously this is not finished, it's something that will be long term, but we are coming back to this issue today, uh, this week during our conference. Nous allons aussi étudier la question de l'impact du ralentissement économique sur la population. Évidemment, on dit souvent que le Canada a, a passé la crise économique euh, en meilleure euh, figure que beaucoup d'autres pays euh, développés. Par contre, il demeure que euh, l'impact dans la vie de certaines personnes concrètes, les chômeurs, les sans-abri, euh, c'est un impact terrible et nous voulons étudier qu'est-ce que nous, comme évêques, nous pouvons faire dans nos approches pastorales, dans nos organisations de ces années paroissiales. Nous allons avoir quelques experts qui viendront échanger avec nous. Nous allons avoir l'occasion de célébrer le centième anniversaire de l'arrivée du premier évêque catholique ukrainien au Canada. A hundred years ago, uh, the first uh, Catholic Ukrainian bishop came to Canada, blessed Nikita Budka, and uh, the whole uh, Ukrainian Catholic Church is rejoicing. Uh, we will be receiving here the visit of His Beatitude, uh, Sviatoslav uh, Shevchuk, who is the major archbishop of the uh, Ukrainian Catholic Church, and he will be coming to address us. And we will be celebrating 
the Holy Liturgy in the uh, Ukrainian liturgy on uh, Thursday morning, I believe it is. And finally, we will be studying questions of ecumenical collaboration in social justice projects in various coalitions. Uh, it, these coalitions are important for us, but they raise a number of issues that we will want to study and address together. Donc, les questions d'écuménisme. Si je peux conclure en disant que euh, avant euh, que la conférence commence officiellement, hier, une trentaine d'évêques se sont rencontrés euh, pour euh, un forum sur euh, les peuples autochtones. Euh, Kateri Tekakwita sera canonisé euh, à la fin du mois d'octobre. Et c'est pour nous l'occasion de réfléchir à nouveau, comme catholiques, comme leaders de l'Église catholique, quelles sont nos relations avec les, les Autochtones catholiques parmi nous, mais aussi tous les Autochtones, les Amérindiens ici au Canada. So, we're, because of the canonization of Kateri Tekakwita, it's an occasion for us to reflect once again on the importance of our pastoral ministry with uh, First Nations peoples. And so yesterday, about 30 bishops came together before the conference started to spend an afternoon reflecting on these issues. It was a, a wonderful time of exchange. We looked at six different initiatives that are going on in the uh, Canadian Catholic Church right now in terms of reconciliation, in terms of healing, in terms of faith education. And we also had the time to, uh, to look at what some bishops are doing concretely in their dioceses, uh, which opened up a whole discussion among, amongst ourselves about what we could be doing better, some of the issues we need to be addressing, and how we could move forward as a conference uh, so that the conference can help the bishops in their local dioceses to, um, to foster better relations, better faith education, and the integration you could say, greater integration of our First Nations people within the life of our Catholic Church. So that's kind of an overview of what we've lived up to now here at the conference. So I'd like to open it up now to questions. Um, I think you do a good, thank you for the update. Um, what are some of the challenges, your executive committee had a chance to uh, visit Haiti. Um, could you kindly comment, what are some of the challenges that face uh, the people of Haiti um, moving forward? It's a very broad question, a very deep question, uh, and perhaps beyond the, the context of this moment here, but I, I will say this, that one of the things that we noticed uh, with Development and Peace, particularly their projects, are not mega projects. They are local projects where they help local people to find solutions to their uh, local reality. And so my own feeling is I imagine there needs to be these broad-based uh, structural projects that uh, multinationals and foreign countries are doing with the government of Haiti. But where the rubber hits the road, you could say, uh, where the people themselves are faced with incredibly difficult situations, the partners that Development and Peace works with are helping change, the, you could say they're micro changes, but they are they're macro changes in the lives of the people who are affected by them. And uh, so I, I can say that there still needs a lot of work has been done in Haiti. It's remarkable the work that has been done. There is still a lot of work that needs to be done, but the one thing that I noticed was hope. The people I met were people who were filled with hope and they gave us hope as we walked away from our meetings. Well, let me clarify. The executive did not ask Development and Peace to put a hold on their project. We made Development and Peace aware of a problem that some bishops have with the project. And being aware of that, then the leadership of Development and Peace decided to hold back on their campaign. Uh, we will be having a chance together to, uh, to reflect on that. Uh, and to talk about that situation in the broader context of the relationship between development and peace and the CCCB. Thank you. Can sure, I Deborah. I have a question about the Indian Affairs Agenda. Yes. You mentioned something which has been probably the only controversy um, that I've seen 
kind of keep on coming up on your um, your initial resistance, and that's on the actual standing versus kneeling and pushing down. Yes. And then you also mentioned something, uh, the difference between adaptations that are allowed versus those that aren't. Could you expand on that a little bit? Well, I, certainly the nuncio gave a 20-minute presentation uh, looking at the life of the Canadian church from his perspective as the representative of the Pope uh, within the Canadian church. And uh, in that context, he had one little sentence about uh, there has been the missile is a wonderful gift, the New English translation, um, the implementation of the new... Um, directives, the uh, general introduction to the Roman Missal is going well. He says that one little issue has come up. It's because the Roman Missal does indicate that uh, when it comes to posture, when you read it, it seems to say that people should be standing until everybody's received communion. And there is a sense to that. Some people are finding this hard. And so uh, the nuncio uh, shared with us that the congregation for um, uh, divine worship and the sacraments uh, has, re has uh, stated that though the missal does say people should be standing, it shouldn't be seen as impeding the possibility of kneeling also. And uh, so he brought that to our attention. I imagine our liturgical offices will be looking at this and uh, making recommendations to bishops. But it is true that it is uh, a question that is uh, creating some uh, difficulty. Madame. Yes, sir, I have a Well, je, je crois que les questions concernant... Il y, y a deux ordres de questions. Un, une, un ordre de question, c'est... Uh, au niveau des politiques générales gouvernementales autour des réfugiés, d'une part, et des immigrants, euh, d'autre part. Euh, des questions, par exemple, de la difficulté qu'ont certains immigrants de pouvoir euh, ramener leur famille pour, pour les rejoindre. Parfois, des questions de, de bureaucratie qui deviennent pénibles. Parfois, des, des politiques euh, qui, euh, qui rendent l'intégration... Des, des immigrants euh, plus difficiles au Canada, qu'elles pourraient l'être autrement. Et évidemment, ce sont des questions que beaucoup de gens qui travaillent dans le monde de l'immigration portent. Nous les portons avec eux. Euh, les évêques euh, essaient d'être conscients de, des difficultés que peuvent vivre les immigrants et les réfugiés et de porter ces situations-là à l'attention euh, du gouvernement. Alors, ce sont des, des questions de cet ordre-là. Il y a aussi une question plus pratique, c'est celle des prêtres internationaux qui viennent travailler chez nous. Et parfois, il y a des, des petits problèmes de visa, de, de permis de résidence. Et dans ce contexte-là, nous voulons aussi clarifier un peu euh, ces questions concrètes pour les prêtres, les religieux qui viennent travailler au Canada de l'extérieur. Alors, yes. Yes. So how is this, this national permit for the Dalit, is the aim of that, is one of the aims to uh, ensure that next time we also have anglophones in the United States? The, 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 the national program uh, is not geared towards the uh, World Day for Families uh, in, a, in a specific way, you know. And the fact that this time our delegation was mostly from Francophone Canada from, than from Anglophone Canada, I think is uh, purely accidental. Uh, I don't think it's, it was meant to be that way or it, that it reflects anything particular. The, uh, the bishop who gave the report on uh, the World Day of Families made the comment, he says, I hope next time there will be more representation from English Canada. And since it will be in the States, uh, in Philadelphia, I believe, uh, certainly I, I'm, I, I, I expect that to happen. But uh, how can you say, I believe what is happening is that there's a growing awareness within uh, the CCCB of the importance of events like this one. I, I think, for example, we rediscovered the importance of the International Eucharistic Congress when it was held in Quebec. And that 
I think flowed the the result was the presence in um, in Dublin. So I expect the same kind of effect is going to have with the the families. And with this, I have to conclude. Our time is up. Thank you very much for being here, and we'll be back tomorrow afternoon. Merci beaucoup pour votre présence. À demain après-midi.